Yo, what's going on guys? It's Retonic here, and today I'm going to be walking you guys through DS4 Windows once again. This time it's with a new update. Not much has changed, but I just want to make sure everybody's updated with all the settings. Also, I'm going to be going through some bugs that some of you guys have had with DS4 Windows, and also solving some problems. So if you guys have any more questions that I don't answer in this video, make sure you drop a comment down below. Also trying to hit 2k subs, if you guys want to sub if you're new, it helped me out a lot. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss any more videos. Other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get into the video and explain some things to you guys. Hope you enjoy. Alrighty guys, so I'm going to go ahead and open up DS4 Windows now. So I've already done the update, and if you don't know, it'll pop up for you saying that you have an update. And you can go ahead and update it, or you can come down to the settings, and you can hit check for update now, and then you can go ahead and update it from there. So the first tip I want to give you guys is that you guys should always do the controller slash driver setup when you're first starting DS4. Now this is for the first time, if you've already set it up, it might not be as helpful for you, but if you did have some issues with it the first time, you might want to run this. If you didn't already do it, a lot of times it'll just fix some of the simple problems that you have. Now, the second thing I want to address is the double input that a lot of people were having that issues with. At first, I recommended using the D1 input setting, which is in the profiles. I'll show you guys that later. But the best way to do that is to go to your device manager, which I will show you guys later in the video. And what it's doing is when you have your controller wired, it sets up a profile for that controller in your device manager. Now, when you use a wireless, it sets up another one. So when you go ahead and go into Fortnite with the DS4 wireless and the wired one, they clash with each other so when you hit you know l1 one time it's going to go through your weapons twice not one time because there's two inputs being pushed at one time which you have to get rid of the wired one now if you like playing wired then don't have ds4 open or you'll have the double input again so that's two ways to fix it again i'll show you guys the d1 input thing as well it just kind of makes your movement feel a little weird but if you're playing a game like rocket league it might not matter as much but if you're playing like an fps it would definitely matter so that makes a difference Third tip, or third tip, I want to go ahead and go into the settings which we're in right now and just show you guys what I use. Just copy the settings I have here. It's really helpful if you guys have it checking for updates at startup. So that way every time you start up the app or if you start up your PC and you have it running at startup like I do, it'll automatically check for updates and you guys can just update it as needed. Next thing is I want to go over to the profiles. I'm just going to go over to video tutorial for now. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the dead zone section. Now what I recommend is whatever game you are in, just set your dead zone to the lowest it will go, which in Fortnite it is 0 .05, 0 .05, and then you can change your dead zone in here until you don't get drift anymore, that is the best way to do it. Next thing I wanted to use is showing you guys how to use your touchpad on Fortnite, because right now there is a bug where you cannot legitimately use your touchpad on Fortnite, you have to bind a different button on your controller to your touchpad and then allow it to work. So I'll show you guys how that works. You want to hit your touchpad as uses controls. And here, if you have the swipe functions, you can swipe across your touchpad. And what it will do is it'll allow you to select a bind on your keyboard or on your controller to set for that function. So it's a pretty cool function. And I use, I normally use it for my map. So I put M on all four of those right here. So you just want to click on it, click on M. And then obviously you want to hit apply and save. So when you go into your game, you'll swipe on your touchpad and your map will come up. It's pretty cool. So if you want to use your touchpad as a button, like a press down button, what you need to do is you need to scroll down all four of these upper touch, multi-touch, right touch, and left touch. You want to double click on those and assign them to some button on your controller that you don't use. Now for me, it is one of the D-pad buttons. I'm just going to select right button for now. And you want to assign right button to all four of these. Now that's not the end of it. When you go into Fortnite or whatever game you're playing, you want to assign the button you were trying to use for your touchpad on your D-pad. So I was trying to pull out my pickaxe with my touchpad. Now my touchpad doesn't work unless I use this method, so I have to actually bind my pickaxe in Fortnite to my right on the D-pad, so that way it'll work with my touchpad. So that is how that works, just to clear that up, because a lot of people didn't know how that went. So, now that we've been through some of those things, I want to go to the controller readings here, and just kind of show you guys, actually my controller keeps disconnecting because it is dead. But now that it loads up again, you guys can see I still have the same input delay. I'm going to go back over to the other section. And you want to go ahead and put this on max. Or you can put it at 1000 hertz. They're pretty much the same. Max drains your battery more and 1000 hertz drains your battery a little bit less. But they're both pretty similar. Now again, the reason we use the Xbox 360 is because it gets less input delay than the DualShock 4 one. Plus some games don't recognize the DualShock 4 controller. So that is another reason of another benefit actually to using the 360 emulated controller. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you don't have um, these two selected. You don't want to launch the program with a profile. Sometimes that causes errors. Same thing with mouse acceleration. You don't even want that turned on at all. None of these settings over here matter. The rumble doesn't really matter unless you want um, no vibration when you're playing with wired 
which again, if you're playing with Wired, you don't really want to be using DS4, there's no reason to. Next thing you guys got here is the color section, which I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. You can just change your color for your mode, and you can also put it on pass-through. And you can also have it color by battery, so whatever the battery is, is what the uh, color will change to. Output curve, again, this affects your movement in other games, not specifically Fortnite. Now, your game, your movement will feel different with different settings on Fortnite, but if you're playing a game like an FPS, like, let's say, Call of Duty, for instance, and the enhanced precision is pretty nice on your right stick for Call of Duty. I definitely tried it, and I like it a lot better. So you guys can experiment around with these. I wouldn't move your left stick, because that's your movement. I would definitely move, or I would definitely experiment around with the right stick one. But uh, yeah, it's pretty simple for that. Other than that, I'd say that's pretty much it for directly into DS4 Windows. Now I'm going to show you guys right now how to fix the double input thing with your device manager. So the first thing you want to do is you just want to go down here, type in device manager, it should come up right there. I'm going to go ahead and full screen this to show you guys better. Now the actual, the next thing you want to do is you want to go to sound, video, and game controllers. And then we're going to go to another setting next. Now, it's not going to show up for me here because I don't have the wired one on there, but it might show up there for you. Next one you want to check is the is the human interface devices. Now, again, I don't have it here, but you guys will have it here if you didn't already get rid of it or if it automatically got rid of it for you. But if you're having the double input problem, you will definitely have it here. It should be called HID compliant game controller. Now, I don't have it, but if I were to turn on my controller just for a second, if it will just connect. As you guys can see, I have two of them. Now, both of these, one is for the wired and one is for the wireless. Now, when I start up DS4 Windows, it goes away and it should for you too, but if you have the DS4, uh, or if you have the uh, double input issue, wow, that's a tongue twister. If you have the double input, double input issue, then you guys wanna make sure that you delete one of them, which you do that by just clicking on it, going on driver, and then you just wanna hit uninstall device. Now, I'm not gonna do it, this is a system controller, but yeah, that's how you get rid of that issue. Hopefully this helps you guys out. If it did, make sure to drop a like down below. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, make sure to comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Peace.